The year 2020 brought a new challenge every day. Each moment was as unique and diverse as the shades of our skin. We saw politics up close and personal. Our response? Name our pain and speak up to make change. We have amplified the voices of uh, African-American political scientists, not only in the United States, but globally. But the question, issues of the day, are issues that unfortunately seem not to go away. These issues keep re-emerging, resurfacing. White supremacy, racism, Islamophobia, neo-imperialism. I mean, these are big, broad words, but these are realities of our world right now. As a political scientist, I, like many others, watch the news, read social media, and often come away shocked and dismayed at our current political and social climate. You can't have a system that says what? For the people, by the people, and other people, when you got a veto over the people. The protests are pretty much always effective. It's just that black political leadership moved away from using protests. So this effective tool is used more rarely. All of these inequities um, are growing even more large and these chasms are widening. It's almost uh, disheartening sometimes just to see and know what was going on before and that that's exacerbated now in the world that we are in. I mean, we can talk specifically about inequality and wealth, but, but, but we should also talk about inequality in terms of being able to access food and able to access sanitary shelter. These inequalities are persistent in the U.S. society and other societies at large. Another pressing issue, I would say, is economic relief. A lot of people in our communities are suffering due to, to the effects of this you know, unforeseen pandemic. I'm constantly trying to straddle that line of like, do I need to do this career as a diversity inclusion consultant? as a way to make money so that I can live a sustainable life? Or should I just go all the way into the art that's really important to me, like this Black liberation work that I'm doing? 2020 was a year like no other. Pain, trauma, and unrest all across the diaspora. We longed for meaningful change and relief, then saw history as the first Black woman was elected to the United States Vice Presidency. We just came out of this election. So of course, the 2020 election is definitely, uh, as a political scientist, is definitely on your mind because I say it's the election that won't go away. <laughs> it's a continuation of the legacy of Black women and their political work. Um, and Black women saying, okay, it's time, right? It's time that we have not just only a symbolic seat at the table, but a real seat at the table. To see a black woman ascend to position of vice president, in a lot of ways it shows, you know, all the all the work that black women have been doing, right? Now that, you know, we have a new administration in the White House, I am trying to see how do we move forward past the four years where we clearly had some white nationalist tones coming out of the White House. It's been sort of difficult for many of us, you know, living through a pandemic at the same time that we are going through an election where there's questions about the survival of democracy in the U.S. I look forward to these young activists being impactful on the state and local level and not just on the federal level. It's your time to release all that is in you uh, that will make the world better. Now more than ever, we need uh, the skills and the know-how that you've developed. As chair of the membership committee, I am extending a very special invitation for you to join us as a member of the National Conference of Black Political Scientists. Africans, African descended peoples, peoples of color, can feel a safe space to express uh, their understandings of uh, the political history of uh, our communities, the struggles that we face. 
I think it's really great to have, again, this liberated zone where all of these Yes, intellectuals, yes, professionals are coming together, but more importantly, these family members are welcoming people back. And it almost felt like a formal family reunion. Every time Haynes saw me, he greeted me with a loud shout of my rich cousin, Paula. That was what, he, and it didn't matter where we were or how many people were around, this is what Haynes would yell out, okay? So I didn't have to figure out, oh, I know, that's Haynes, right? Um, but that was, as you know, that's the kind of person that Haynes was. Very gregarious, um, giving, generous. It's been a reunion. Every year we come back and we meet old friends. To have that type of fellowship is, is comforting. It is um, as if everyone at that conference is lifting you. It's important to have black scholars around that can say, hey, this is the way to go. You know, and I've been grateful that I've had a lot of black scholars that have come along and said, I'll hold your hand, I'll show you the way. It also gave me this confidence because I was in a space that was created for me. We hope to see you at our conference in March. But if not, please consider becoming a member of our very special community.